Hey everybody, good afternoon. My name is William van Vele. I'm a frequent Tana user. I use it on a daily basis. I've been a big fan of the application. And one of the things that I use in the tool most often is my task management system. Um, I've kept it rather simple, um, but yet I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And because of that reason, I wrote a blog about it. I shared it on the Slack uh, channels, the data Slack channels, uh, it got quite some positive uplift. Uh, people ask me as in, hey, can you share the template and, and can you show me what you've done exactly over there? Now, um, this is my first attempt at the template. It is not quite there yet. I really want to give it some polish, but I felt the time is right to um, to to well, to well make that video and to take you through that system and show you what, I, what I've done so far. So um, let's talk building blocks, commands, example contact and content, and then we'll dive into the app structure. But let's start with super tags first. So um, kicking it off, I have five super tags, the domain, the area, project, task, and recurring task. The domain is, yeah, as the description says, the highest level of the system. It enables me to separate home from work. It's a rather static thing. It's just a placeholder. It does nothing more than that, um, but it serves as a very high level separation between yeah work stuff and private stuff so if i um, configure it very quickly um you know it that doesn't have a base type it doesn't extend anything and there's frankly also no content template underneath could be that there is recurring related information but there is no or related content but there's no such thing Subsequently, there's the areas. Um, together with the projects, I've borrowed the areas from the uh, from Tiago Forti's um, uh, para system. Although, and I get it, I'm a marketing project before area makes sense from a para system. But I think areas are more important hierarchical. So those come under the domain. Um, they, um, you know, are topic based type. Um, they have a domain, which is a lookup to the domains and they can be either active or archived. It's as simple as that. Um, one thing to note, if you dive into the configure field of the domain, um, you know, this is options from super tax, you know, it's required, nothing super difficult over there. This is listed as a field with a semantic function and all the lookup fields have that. And that enables me to do something very powerful, but we'll get to that later on. That's the area. Um, diving into the project next, this one is obviously listed as a project. It um, has a parent area. It has a project status, which is either someday in progress or completed and it has start and end dates. Those are hidden by default. Um, that's my personal preference. Um, looking at the uh, related content over there, um, I there you go, it has open tasks for a project and it has completed tasks for a project. I mean, there's, there's endless opportunities to extend this. You know, in my personal system, I have dev items in there, um, you can embed meetings related to the project, um, you know, super fancy stuff. But for now, um, I've decided to keep it rather simple. Um, the task one is where things get a bit more complex, obviously task base type um, with a parent project or parent area. So indeed, you can link them both to parent area or parent project. This is frankly just a simple search query, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there you go. Parent projects and areas. It, yeah, I mean that that's you know one of the elements where you know Tana really shines. It has a task due date, it has a task priority, and it has a flag um, that um, you can set the yes if, if it is a someday task. Um, again, the the lookup scrolling down semantic function. There you go. As so the areas have that, projects have that, tasks have that as well. Um, is there related content over here? I don't think so. No, there is not. Um, very quickly then to finish off, um, the recurring task is a task and it extends the task. Sometimes you get silly of all those definitions, but you get what it is. And the only thing added, the only field added is the recurrence field. Um, some days hidden here. Um, and recurrence is, is, you know, just flat text field. Uh, enabling me to sort of define the interval interval um, for the next recurrence of this item. Those are the super tags.
Next up, I have a bunch of commands. I have work on, work off, um, which we'll get to in a bit. This enables me to switch domains in my environment, and I'll have an example of that ready. Um, move late tasks to today, which is the ultimate lazy button. If I am, uh, if I don't want to um, drag and drop all my late tasks to the right day, I just click one button and the role moves to today. Especially if stuff lives in previous months, I can and I'm already in the next month. I can just push that button, move everything to today, and and start rescheduling from that point on. Um, set to today for an individual task, delay to tomorrow, delay with three days, that is delay to the weekend, delay to the next week, and delay with seven days, which is not next week. And then there's one, I mean, so those are all related to uh, tasks. And then there's one that is related to um, the recurring task, which is complete and reschedule. Um, I think I've borrowed this from AJ Nesta, so thank you very much for that one. Uh, but, you know, this, this looks at if all the fields are filled, it it, it you know it, it checks off one, it duplicates it, it updates the uh, the task due date based on the recurrence field, and then it unchecks it, something like that. I mean, it's, it's not super difficult, uh, but it has worked tremendously well for me. Example content um, to start off with domains again, you know, it, placeholders. Frankly, there's nothing underneath. Um, example areas um, where you know. We, those are four areas that I defined. You can probably, you know, figure out which ones are work and which ones are private. Um, but if you couldn't, I mean, it, it's via the domain that they're being linked up. If I zoom in, you know, I can. All right, there you go. There's active projects, there are active tasks, there's upcoming projects, there's completing projects, right? So this is giving you sort of an area overview of what is going on over here. Um, next up, example projects. So one level deeper, um, I have defined a couple of projects, um, diving in, um, all right, we have references, but more important, we have open tasks and we have completed tasks, um, where we combine both the normal tasks and the recurring tasks in the same view, um, which I like. We have example tasks, um, zooming into a task, I can see all the obvious fields, parent, project or area. Um, this one works, task due date, task priority. I see all the buttons over here, except the complete and reschedule one, because that is limited to, from a node filter perspective, that is limited to the uh, recurring task and not just the task. Um, so if I go over to uh, recurring tasks and I zoom in, it actually has that button. However, if you zoom out, um, you have the action menu, the buttons are here over yeah, over here as well. In this case, it's active. In this case, it's visible, but grayed out. I think wow, that, that works really nice. So, you know, if I just zoom into an, to a recurring task, um, and you see, okay, my uh, task due date is April 15, and, um, you know, I need to do this again in three days from now. So if I click complete and reschedule, um, there you go. It will then from, because it's defined to look at the task due date, not at today's date. Um, it will then define from April 15 towards tomorrow, which is April 18. So that's the three days. Um, if we zoom out slightly, you'll now see that there's one active one and there's one completed one. And that's the one with April 15 over there. And this is the one with tomorrow over there. So let's just remove that one and put this one back on April 14 for the sake of it. Right, um, so we got, um, sorry, we got super tags, we got commands, we got example content. I've shown you all of that. Let's move on to the app structure. Um, let's start with the home page. On the home page, you see a couple of things. You see this work on, work off button. You see a field that I've defined just on this page, um, but if you would do this on your to-do page, you would embed it into the day super tag. Um, yeah, on your today page, yeah, not to-do page, today page. Uh, you would embed this field on your day super tag. 
Um, and if I click this button, a couple of things will happen. First of all, the work on button will disappear because that work is on and it will be replaced by a work off button. And that happens so fluently that you don't really see that it is two different buttons. It just will, will show up as one button, which is really nice. Second, the home page focus will change from home to work. And third, um, instead of you know the home tasks now showing up, I will get a view with the work tasks showing up. So push the button, there you go. Push it again, there you go. Um, I, 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 yeah, for me, this really works. Um, all right, next up, we have areas. We have active areas. You can see to which domain they're connected. We have home areas. We have work areas. We have archived areas. It's not super difficult, but you know, this is the areas overview. This is the projects overview where I indeed have active projects, future projects, um, which are um not just projects with a start date in the future yes i could play around with that but basically project with a project status being someday um, that might be something to look into later on um so finally completed projects um yeah status is completed and obviously a overview of all the projects then finally on to the tasks um i have a system where I have an inbox and the inbox basically shows me all the tasks that um, need more information to be correctly categorized and need more information is essentially they need an apparent project area, they need an a task due date, which is an, an or with the someday because it's set if it is set to someday, you don't need a task due date, but in any case, it always needs a task priority. So if I, let's say, flag someday over here, it will tell me, okay, you got it. You can clean this up now. And if I add a priority over here, I can clean this up now. Um, so things like that. This is my way, you know, everything comes in both the, the work tasks and the home tasks when I clean things up from this point on. The now section is basically my work section and it, 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 it has everything with P1. Um, I want P1 to also extend to the home, but right now I, I, I have, don't have that set up. P1 is stuff's on fire. I mean, you got to fix that now. And that means either I got to call somebody right now, or I got to run my errands, or I got to pick up the kids from school, which should probably be my calendar, but you get the thing, you know, the really important stuff. The work leverage is this, is the stuff that I believe will actually enable me to, well, to will work as a lever to make things go faster. Um, work neutral for me is, is uh, you know, the normal tasks, um, except that we, as you may have noticed already, also the P1 tasks are, are popping up over here. And, and that is basically a reminder to say, first you fix the P1 stuff and then you go to, you go to look into the other stuff. Work overhead is, is essentially P1 plus P4. P4 is the stuff that I really don't want to do. I don't want to review the plan, but I have to do it, fine. And finally, there is a work planning, which is a calendar view. Um, you know, I use this one a lot to just drag and drop, drag and drop tasks from one day to another. Um, similar setup for home, slightly more simple. I don't need these levels for work um, that, I, that I have for work. I don't need them in my home system. So this one is more straightforward. Um, and obviously you can, you can customize this as you, as you like. Um, in this case, uh, for, uh, yeah, there you go with cards and, you know, a similar one for planning my home task. And I see that I need to update the sales query here or the query here because this one, no, this one is actually, and that's actually quite funny. I could, you know, drag and drop it from here and then I could schedule it. Um, and if I instead, this one, I don't understand why that is there, I remove this one. All of a sudden, it goes back here indeed, and all of a sudden, buy the house is also back in the inbox. Um, yeah, all tasks, and that is essentially it. So it, you know, it's not too difficult, uh, but it's proven to be very effective. Probably, you know, especially because of its structure. Again, I really love to to polish some some more things. P one needs to pop up pop up in home. Um, I want to add some more icons to it. Um, you know, I can I can think of a whole lot of things, for example, underneath projects where you are like, 
Um, in my in my own environment, I have related content with dev items. If I do dev items, if an, if a project is a software development project, um, or I uh, you know I can imagine that you want to want project meetings in there as well, things like that. So there's there's tremendous opportunities, um, but for now this essentially is just a version zero point one. So let me know what you think. Um, send me your feedback. Uh, I'd be very curious to see um, if you think this uh, this could be valuable to you as well.